Welcome to Jenkins Governance Board meeting. It's the 23rd of February, 2022. Uh, agenda topics we've got, uh, news, press contact email alias, version number change, possibly at a year boundary or possible version number change at when we begin requiring Java 11, uh, highlights from the mailing list and possibly an easy CLA status report. Any other topics that need to be on the agenda? Nothing from uh, me. No. Okay. okay. So GSOC, but that's not started yet. That's just prepping, right? Yeah. Well, and it's it's yeah. in the news section. So okay. So we had a weekly release, several fixes for icon and image things that had changed in 335. We've got the LTS release candidate that's out. It will release in two weeks and would love to have additional testing. And then our, tw our app, oh, 2020, wow, that's sad. Google Summer of Code 2022 application has been submitted and we are having office hours every week and we had a webinar today. We're delighted to have five previous Google Summer of Code students as mentors this year on the Jenkins project. So Google, one of Google's goals there is to try to retain new contributors. And this is one of those evidences that, hey, the Jenkins project has actually ret retained several of our former Google Summer of Code students as contributors. So really pleased. We've also got five additional mentors. So a total of 10 mentors right now identified. And we're seeking more and more project ideas. Any questions on the news? Okay, hey, Gavin, next topic, press contact email alias. How's the experience yeah. going? So I don't know how, how, what, where, and how to talk about it. So this has been an interesting um, exercise in finding out who cares. Um, I mean, in the most most true sense of the word. Uh, so currently, I think I mentioned last meeting, the press page is full of, you know, long time ago contributors. Um, and I wanted to try setting up uh, an email alias and we can fall back on the Google Google groups but there has been reports more and more of Google groups losing e not losing emails but marking emails as spam um, a lot of people are saying that the developer list is now dropping emails on them mm -hmm. so one thing I, I prototype real quick was or I talked to the discord support people they have there is a support for com incoming uh, posting by email uh, and you can actually use custom emails for that so we can set up a alias, so press at Jenkins.io, and that goes to uh, Jenkins, Jenkins at discordmail.com or something. I don't, it doesn't really matter. But um, then that can route to the service and that can be either a category, that can be a generic thing, or that can be a group. Uh, the category is nice because you could move a topic to a regular, some emails are wrong, group, let's say press, we can just move it to the right uh, category. It's easy, nice and easy. Um, but it means we can't add additional people to a thread. So, you know, I, I set up a group, I tested it out. I couldn't add Hearn to it. So there's no way to add extra people who might be curious or something like that. Um, I don't know how much stuff we're going to get to press that would be sensitive and that matters. Um, this. The second option is uh, a group. There's a there's groups in uh, Discourse, and they essentially it's just an email thread in in your little notification box. It's not as easy to work with, but you can add or move people. You could split it. You can even take an individual reply and turn that into a topic. It gives us the most flexibility. Um, I think that's probably where I want to go if we want to go down this route. Yeah. Uh, I did talk briefly with the infra team about getting up some aliases for emails, which we don't currently do. Uh, it's going to require time, not probably a lot, but time. Um, so nothing's been done on that front. I've been testing with my own address. So, and we've got a recent addition to the infra team that is somewhat of an email ex expert. Stefan Merrill has been added to the infra team recently, and he he spent years doing email professionally. So, I I don't think that's the level of requirement that we're going to need. Um, okay, it's just right now uh, the MX is pointed at Mailgun, which nobody uh -huh. has access to. Um, it's it. not the right solution. It should be moved to a natural thing we have set up, 
And so that requires setting up something. I think there is a Linux Foundation service that will do incoming email and forwarding. And okay. it'll just be done, but just have to spend time and look into it. So if this is something we want to do, this is just, then we prioritize it type thing. So that's my report on this. Uh, I can do screenshots or demo at a later time or whatever, but yeah, it seems to work. I think I have Mark. Mark I tried to pick one admin and one non-admin in there to kind of play with permissions and see what would work. So I think Mark can poke around and take a look, but yeah, it's relatively straightforward. Great. Yeah. So it's experiments ongoing and discuss in, in the infra meeting. And then again here next, next time we meet. Sure. I, I really don't know. Okay. Um, I don't know what's the next step. So I think next steps for me would be emailing. The, uh, this is the hard part, right? Of the who cares thing. Um, I think it's emailing the dev list and saying there's, five names on this press page, most of which aren't active people anymore. Does anyone want to step up or step in or whatever else? Um, the volume of emails so in the year I've been involved has been four. We've had four emails. And one of them was about that Confluence hack. Right. So. Excellent, okay. That sounds great to me, Gavin. Evelina, any objections from you? Does that seem okay to you? No objections. Okay, great. Let's go forward then. Excellent, thanks, Gavin. Sounds good. And then I think I brought the next topic, which might leads into yours as well. Mm -hmm. um, I've been... I've been keeping an eye on, uh, so I have a, a thread on the forums about doing uh, announcements more regularly, more public. So, you know, new, new, since things, things we're doing with the highlights, mailing list, that kind of thing. Um, one of the things I've noticed is that uh, over and over again, people think that Jenkins are doing Semver, right? Um, they think plugins are similar. They're like, oh, you only changed the minor version, but this major thing changed. And they think that's, you know, they're looking at the version this way. Um, I was thinking, you know, we can move, we could move to more of a dated version number. Um, so in, the, in this case, so Ubuntu does, you know, uh, I think twice a year, they release a dated one. So 2301, uh, 2304 and 2310 would be the ones this year. Is it actually, no, 22. Wow, I started that phone. Uh, 20, 2204 and, and 2210. Um, but then, you know, that would, we could do one, we could do per week. So 22.1, 22.2, and have 52 releases. Mm -hmm. um, it just makes it a little bit less, people assume that it's um, a minor release then. You know, they're not seeing, you know, version 2.303 thinking it's slightly different than 302 type thing. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So there are certainly there are certainly plenty of examples in industry doing it that yeah. way where they're saying they're admitting, look, let's get on a yearly cadence. And and one of my worries with the current version numbers is how often lately I've been juxtaposing the digits two and three yeah. in various interesting ways and making mistakes in bug reports and other yeah. places where I just yeah. simply say things wrong. Yeah, and you know when someone in IRS or on uh, on Gitter says, you know, I'm upgrading from two dot one hundred to two three oh three, you're like, uh, okay, so that's divided by fifty two. That's well, that's a two year release. Yeah, you know, and this right. would be a little bit more quick and easy for us to go. Oh yeah, you're upgrading from one that's four years ago. You really want to do it this way, or you really want to follow these release notes. Um, the problem is though, you know, we do have uh, infra failures once in a while. You know, like uh, a bad tagging or. CI pipeline easy fix, and we usually just skip the release and go like so. Instead of you know maybe three hundred one failed, but three hundred two was fine. It'd be mm -hmm. a lot more obvious for that. Yeah, but but okay, it's going to be it's fairly obvious anyway. So I, I think I think it's an interesting one, and I like the notion of if it's if it's now would you envision LTS would be twenty three dot oh one dot one? Yeah, that'd be my thinking. Uh, yeah, so I don't have a strong opinion here, but I wanted to bring it up and I thought it was worth discussing. Yeah, I, I think, and 
leading leading zero intentional because we would expect to not have more than 99 releases in a year. I would hope we would not have more than 52 releases in a year, but yes. All right. Okay. Because, yeah, 99 would be... No, 99 would be just less than uh, every release failing once. Right. Okay. So, one, what was it? 104 would be every release failing once. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I think, yeah, that would be legit. Good. So, I think it's worth a, a conversation. This is probably one that justifies a, a context of a Jenkins enhancement proposal. And, but I, I like the idea. Let's let's hash through this one as compared to the next one. So this this has the benefit that we just do it on a calendar calendar event, right? Yeah. It's annual. We're not trying to declare some features are bigger or smaller. We don't waste time or energy having those disputes. It's just the calendar event occurred. It's now the year twenty three. We're going to make the version number twenty three. Yeah, and it's like I've been in a situation when I had a couple of Jenkins instances to review that had different versions, and every time I just had to check when was this released. Is it something that is outrageous that is still up and running or not? And and if you if you see it very clearly that it's a year or year old uh, version or something, then it kind of screams update me or something like that. So. Uh, I think it's uh, yeah worth exploring definitely. When when you log into a dev, uh, Ubuntu box and it says sixteen oh four on the login screen, you're like, oh no no no, I'm not touching this machine. <laughs> I'm getting out of here right now. Yeah. Right, or or fourteen or twelve. Oh, yeah, think, exactly. Yeah. All of those are reminders that yeah, so. And Evelina, thanks for being the voice for the users. That that experience is is good justification to say, hey, you know what? This makes it very clear and. And truly, we don't have strong semantics for the version number two, right? It just doesn't, right? It's it's long ago. We've been through multiple major changes. We went through tables to divs. We went through. We've been. We're now in configuration form modernization phase one. We'll go through phase two in June, and none of those have rolled the major number. So I think it's a good. It's worth considering. Uh, in the end, those major numbers means something to you, to people yeah. who are developing it. Yeah, to the, to the, to the, to the user, it'll mean one thing, to the developer, it'll mean a different thing, mm -hmm. to the writer, the news reporter, it'll mean the third thing. It doesn't mean anything to anyone, so. Yeah, it may right. mean something like, okay, that might be a tricky update, but, uh, yeah. or upgrade or something, but Which yeah. is what the LTS is supposed to uh, kind mm. of handle, so. Yeah, good, good point. Now, I don't know what the impact is in various places of making such a change, but I, I think it's worth us worth us evaluating it, bringing it as a proposal for discussion. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I don't touch core. I don't know what the implementation details would be. I don't know. The release officer would have to be involved. But, right. You know, I think about it last night. I think, again, we have so many people going, I'm going to update from this version to this version. And I go to the change log. I'm like, okay, you know, 100 was, you know, Right, you're, you're applying all sorts of internal knowledge because the version number gives you no hints about it. Whereas if we if we switch to at least annually, the hint is, oh, this was in the year 23. Yeah, good. And we can be like six months ago, uh, tables of div happened. So that's probably going to be 2106. Okay, if you're in that range, maybe this is the problem. I don't have to go look at the change log. And I know Mark knows the every version by you know, is memorized in perfect memory on that, but the rest of us have to look that up. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay, Evelina, you look, to look, look a little perplexed. Are you okay with this as, as it stands? <laughs> yes, I'm okay. Great, all right. Anything else, Gavin? So I assume the next step there is, a. Uh, do you wanna work with me on a JEP for it to try to describe it? Do you wanna do it yourself? I don't want to do it myself. I, I'm not really sure I want to do it at all, but yes, I think that is the next step. So I probably help get help from you in writing it. Okay, great. And and I've got to explore some, certainly my employer will want to think carefully about what does this mean? Um, so CloudBees is, and I suspect Red Hat may care. You know, there are several other companies that are shipping things based on Jenkins. So we'll want to put it into the community and use the JET process to vet it. Yeah. 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 And, you know, maybe we just go to three. I mean, so there's all kinds of other, there's actual technical requirements. Uh, 
Chrome and Firefox are apparently this week, this month, both hitting version 100. Uh-huh. And they're actually finding there's, uh, well, in the case of browsers, there's user user string parsers that are just breaking on a three digit, the code, right? Right, because so they expect two digits exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, there's going to be more than just, hey, this is a cool idea. We're going to have to actually spend some time and see, right. you know, do we have version parsers, especially in like the, um, uh, the, the, we have, we have version site or you know yeah. we've got version number lab that definitely has some special special knowledge about version numbers so yeah absolutely evaluate feasibility etc good i like that thank you okay so and given given that conversation i think i'm mostly prone to drop this topic i had considered should we roll the version number to 3.x when we require Java 11 or newer, because it's a major change. It's, it's conceptually a breaking change because it may be that code, once we require Java 11, will, will not even execute on a Java 8 virtual machine. And so that for me was possible justification to roll the, the core version number from two to three. However, we, have, we would what? have 22 major versions before we have an issue, right? If we're, we can still do both. And I do think, like mm. so if we start this year, we can do 20, what is it? Uh, 20 major versions before we even have a real issue, right? Overlapping the two processes. Right. Um, I do agree that uh, a 3.0 actually sounds valid for Java 11 requirement because it signifies that you have to go look at the upgrade notes or the release notes, you know? Okay, good. And, and Evelina, thinking from, from how the users experience it, are we going to cause frustration and irritation if we, let's say in September, we roll to version three, and then in January, we roll to version 23? Are we going to cause irritation, frustration, aggravation? Should we have skipped September's roll and just- uh, admit- I mean, I, I, I imagine, <clears throat> I know in the, in the, the uh, the customers I was working with, we, for example, for for automatic upgrade of the plugins in using Jenkins as code, Docker, we were parsing Docker file to get the latest version, the version of Jenkins they are using. So I imagine there might be situations where there is some regex that users use to, to, to check what's the current version of Jenkins we're using. And uh, if, if we can keep it to, uh, I don't know, a number dot, a number dot, a number, then it's not going to be a gigantic change. But uh, uh, I think Mark's yeah. comment was, it, and, I, and I don't, I think people are going to get upset no matter what, but uh, I think the question <laughs> was. I don't want to be uh, uh, that uh, pessimistic, but it's yeah. not like it didn't cross my mind. <laughs> no, no. But his comment was, if we roll to 3.0, in September, and then in January, we go to 23.1, you know, are people going to be upset? And the, the answer is probably some of them, some vocal ones will be, but most people are like, cool, new version, keep going, you know? Right. Yeah. And I mean, someone always will be upset. I, I do believe, as I mentioned before, that it does make sense. I, I would welcome it as a Jenkins user to, to have the version that tells me that it's fairly recent version or, or straight away with the number and there might be some adaptation needed and i'm not saying we have to retain this format but probably sticking to that format would would make it a little bit easier for some to transition for many it will be i mean they will barely notice really so well will not Excellent. make everyone happy but uh, as long as the change makes sense and and is supposed to bring a a, a a value then uh, yeah we 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 should try i'm Good. thinking okay. of the version number for plugins for the uh what is it i don't have a better name for it the cd version the jep to something where it uh, you know people saw these suddenly these new version numbers and panicked and so we got to be careful about making sure we communicate that because no one really has and it's scaring people and i don't really have a good solution to fix that got it yes i mean doing whole numbers so you know 2301 and 2301.1 will be will be fine but it's just something we want to make sure we make clear in communication 
makes sense. Yeah, and but I it agree. doesn't mean that your Jenkins is 20 versions behind or something. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. We, yeah. we admit we're doing a discontinuity and it's an intentional discontinuity for the benefits we get on the other side. Mm. Yeah, good. On their hand, Debian never changes the version number and you're really confused because they just changes the wording. Yeah, I, I really love Ubuntu's alphabetical naming because I know that A follow, precedes B and D Oh, I didn't even know they're alphabetical. Oh, yeah, they are. Absolutely. The animals they choose are alphabetically named rolling. And yeah. it's it's really great. But uh, yeah. But they Debian's run out of them at some point. Yeah, and then they roll over. They roll over to A again. So they wrapped around. Okay. Well, I mean, like Debian's, I think we're on 14 now It's stable, but maybe, but maybe it's 15. I don't know. You know? Yeah, no, it's it's 11 is stable. It's bullseye. But yeah. <laughs> Wait, but yeah, what's 14? Is 14 like the most unstable one? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, on, on and on. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I prefer dates. And I've brought this up before and it kind of got, same with the 3.0 release, it kind of got, meh, who knows? Well, and, and see, I'm going to, JEP 2, I think it's 236 has been, has been merged. That's the required Java 11 thing. But I'm going to bring this, I think, as a pull request to that as a revision, because I think it's worth the discussion in the yeah. larger community. Requiring Java 11 is big enough. Let's consider rolling to 3.x and at least have a conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Anything else on that version number topic? Nope. Okay, next topic then. Highlights from the mailing list and community um, forum. Uh, I know, I know it's, it's kind of silly, but there was a, a thread with someone was commenting about your ability. I think it was the platform meeting minutes where you had everything in chapters and different timestamps. Um, and, you know, I just want to double up. Like you have, you're, I wouldn't say chairing, but managing what, six uh meetings for Jenkins and posting minute notes and having recordings and they are uh you know very well done and very organized well and and happy to do that I only do those chapter things for for meetings where I think chapters yeah. are really really important and the UX Demo, sig is yeah. one of the which it's white hot right people want to see exactly the thing that is being highlighted. And so they jump right to it, yeah. see the little demo, and then they're done. Yeah, good. But, you know, the whole thread, just wanted to, you know, shout it out here as well. It's a, it, you know, yeah. Thank you for doing that. Happy to, thanks. And then I'm throwing out, uh, Daniel Beck released a new GitHub Actions for doing uh, basic security scans on plugins. So any plugin author can opt in and get, uh, warnings saying, oh, you're you're using this key says it's a secret, but it's a string. So you probably want to use a secret variable or, you know, you're not requiring a post on this endpoint. So all the basic security scanning that they do can now be done as on a PR. So you don't introduce new stuff. Um, it's pretty getting pretty good results so far. There's a bit of tweaks on the actual permission model, but so far everything looks pretty good. Yeah, I was I was delighted to see positive comments from Jesse Glick and from Basil Crow both. That's that's two very 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 positive endorsements for me. And yes, I'm sure it'll get better. And then the last one I'm adding because I'm biased and so is Mark, but uh, the Markdown Formatter plugin uh, I forgot we never never posted that I released it, so I put it in the. Uh, Put it in the, um, the the forum saying that you know you any you can replace the HTML parser the the safe one with a Markdown parser and it will let you put Markdown in anywhere you had to put HTML before. So. And, and P.S. Thank you very much. The terrible thing is I've got probably a hundred or more jobs that I have to go un un undamage all the HTML I inserted into them so that I can use Markdown to make them easier to read. Thanks very much, Gavin. All right, so I'm gonna drop the Easy CLA report off the, off the agenda. Oleg's not available. Any other topics we need to discuss today before we close? Nothing from me. All right, thanks everybody. Recording will be available probably within the next 24 to 48 hours.
Uh, sorry, uh, Mark, did you have a recording for last week's? It's not on the minutes, so I don't know if it got posted. It, I, I think it, for the one two weeks ago, it did get posted. Okay, I just so haven't just put didn't... it into the minutes. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't. One of those failures yeah. on recording activity. No, it's all good. See ya. All right. Thanks.